Good morning and welcome to our presentation. And first of all, let us introduce ourselves. My name is Kirill Shilov and this is Grigory Lazuri. And we are the students, third year students of the Department of Aeromechanics and Flight Engineering of Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. So the subject of our paper is uh, MAV autopilot for commercial and research purposes. So uh, generally this paper contains the description and ideas and main concepts regarding why creating MAV autopilot. So the presentation is divided into several parts. So uh, firstly we will outline the main requirements for contemporary autopilot. Then we will move on speaking about the hardware components. Later, we will mention the prototyping and hardware development process. Uh, the special uh, part is, de is dedicated for the embedded software. And in conclusion, we will tell you about our current state of the project and uh, future plans. So, uh, let's start. It's uh, not a secret for all of you that uh, the most significant part of uh, micro air vehicle or uh, autonomous air vehicle is its flight control system. So it gives the ability for both stabilization and navigation. And nowadays there are a lot of autopilots on the market. Uh, a lot of them are in budget price range, so it makes their implementation easy and affordable. So a lot of them are also open source, so they give an opportunity to study how it works and make your own changes. Uh, but due to the rapid development of contemporary electronics, uh, such kind of devices become obsolete very fast. So also it's known that the best way to experience something is to do it, it on your own. And that's why we decided uh, to build our own autopilot uh, um, aimed at both rotor wing and fixed wing type of MAVs from the scratch. So and also our main goal was to use the latest electronic component, uh, components for the hardware uh, in, in our project available at the moment. And as a result, we would like to bring into the market new autopilot aimed at both commercial and research purposes. So let's move to the uh, next part of our presentations. Uh, this is, these are main requirements we outline before we started to work. So uh, the most significant requirement was to refuse the usage of analog sensors uh, and Therefore, meaning implementation only digital ones. So it has several pluses, uh, like uh, we have a reduced electromagnetic noise impact, it leads to a higher measurement accuracy, and moreover, we get access to already processed data. So our main microcontroller uh, need to work, uh, need to spend less time on uh, data conduction. Uh, the autopilot also must have powerful microcontroller, which can uh, give that opportunity to run routines, processes uh, at high frequencies. And another important requirement at the initial stage of the development uh, was to uh, make uh, autopilot hardware uh, <coughs> as compact as it possible. So it means that it will be able to implement in even very small MAVs. And it's obvious that the most uh, important sensor is uh, HRS or uh, IMU system, inertial measurement unit. So as you know, it consists of uh, accelerometers, gyroscopes, and magnetometer. And until recently, all these three devices were produced each in its own case. But uh, it, uh, it requires a lot of uh, more space on PCB. And finally, it requires uh, to implement sophisticated fusion algorithms in main microcontroller uh, to get uh, attitude in quaternion or error angles presentation. And yeah, in our design, we decided to implement uh, the brand new sensor, which is known as MPU6050 from Innovations Company. So it consists of Fraxis gyroscope and Fraxis accelerometer on the same silicon die. And uh, moreover, it has uh, I2C interface with DMP technology. Uh, you can see here a digital motion processing. So it means that it can output uh, raw data, accelerations and angular rates, as well as uh, already processed data in quaternion or error angles representation. And the size of the package is uh, 4 by 4 by 0 0.9 millimeters. And uh, I would like to also, I would like to mention also that uh, Inventions is working 
on the next generation sensor nowadays. It will be called MPU Nysalent, and it will also have an internal magnetometer. So it means that uh, later we will we can refuse the usage of our external magnetometer, and uh, we will use uh, internal already integrated. So as soon as we uh, understand which components the autopilot must have, uh, we made the hardware block diagram. You can see it on the slide. Uh, in the heart of the whole system, uh, there is a microcontroller. We decided to use uh, STM32, uh, 70 megahertz, 32 bits, ARM Cortex-M processor from ST. Uh, it has uh, high performance, uh, good real-time capabilities, <coughs> and low power voltage operations. So moreover, it has its own native USB interface for firmware uploading, debugging, and testing routines. Uh, it can be also used as a virtual home port, so meaning that we and that the USB TTL converter is not required. So motion processing unit is there, magnetometer and pressure sensor are connected to the same uh, digital I2C line. Uh, additionally, we decided to implement a micro SD card for in flight data logging. It's connected by SPI, and uh, also we have external connections for. Uh, for example, GPS, uh, the award, uh, as well as for wireless telemetry. It also has PWM inputs, outputs, six inputs and six outputs, uh, to get the data from signals from uh, the receiver and output them into the servers or electronic speed controllers. Also, we have uh, several AEC channels for uh, the sonar, for LFP sensor, uh, and for battery voltage and current monitoring. <coughs> So as soon they, as we determine the concepts and imagine the schematics, we assembled it on the breadboard. You can see the evaluation board for a microcontrol and for inertial measurement unit. And during this period, we made low-level low software uh, for communication between the sensors and microcontrol and actuators. Uh, once we prepared a preliminary schematics autopilot, it's here. So we faced an issue of real flight tests, uh, but uh, it's obvious that it, it's impossible to set up such kind of prototype on a real MAV because it's very unreliable and the size is too big. So, and this brings us to the next stage of our project. Uh, this is a hardware design. Uh, it, you can see on the slide, this is a PCB we developed so in front, on the black background, you can see uh, two layers. Uh, red traces, this is the first layer, top. Uh, the blue traces, this is the bottom layer. And uh, between them, there are also two layers. Uh, brown layer is pink, and 3.3 walls layer is yellow, uh, with a thick uh, uh, five wall trace for, uh, the power, for power supply of internal external connections. Uh, now we would like to show you the final uh, 3D render of the hardware. This is the board. You can see uh, the size. It's 60 by 40 millimeters. And also it was mentioning that exactly at this point of the project we faced an issue that uh, it doesn't have a name. And uh, generally speaking, we, uh, we wanted to have a recognizable symbol on our uh, Product project, so we decided to give it a name, Smart App, uh, which is also known as Smart Autopilot. This is uh, how the board looks like after assembly, uh, top view and bottom view respectively. Uh, unfortunately, one IC is uh, missed; it's absent. This is because we have a short delay with components delivery, but now it's okay. Now all is fine. Uh, now I would like to speak a little about the software. So uh, I will outline the most essential parts here. So we started to develop the software as soon as uh, we received evaluation boards. It was our first experience in programming for our microcontrollers. But thanks to uh, good documentation from ST, understanding the software concepts didn't take much time. So. The first important thing we did was the communication with a PC laptop, with the computer, uh, with the receiver, and with sensors. 
at that stage, we developed uh, low-level uh, libraries for the software for UART, USB, PWM, inputs, outputs, I2C, SPI, ADC. Uh, it was uh, mentioned earlier at the schematics block diagram. So autopilot is installed, it is installed uh, as usual, bridging the gap between the receiver and servers. Uh, electronic speed controllers. It depends on what you use, uh, fixed wing, plane, or uh, rotary MIV. And so uh, all settings can be set up in uh, servo uh, library. And the next task we had started to think about was the orientation determination. Uh, uh, you can guess that as well as we use uh, MPU 6050, it's not required to make any calculations in main microcontrol, so we get already processed data in quaternion output. Update rate is 200 hertz. Uh, it's enough for attitude determination and stabilization, and it was proved by real flight tests. And another important thing I would like to mention here is the gyroscope bias correction. Uh, as you remember, it has an uh, accelerometer gyroscope in MPU 6 c 50 and uh, we have external magnetometer and heading is uh, calculated based on angular rate from that gyroscope and is corrected with angle from that magnetometer which update frequency is not so high but the direction value is enough accurate. And for IFU tests we uh, made a special software based on processing, actually this is a desktop application. Uh, you can see the board in my hand in front of the screen uh, with application running. Uh, <coughs> in conclusion, I would like to say that the work on the project is still continuous. By the moment, uh, entire uh, hardware has been validated and uh, thus confirming the correctness of PCB layout and electronic components choice. And as more prospective direction, the autopilot is tested now on a quadcopter. You can see it on the right. And this is the zoomed picture with the uh, hardware, with an autopilot itself. And uh, speaking about the timeline, I would like to say that the project was started in uh, October 2011, uh, about eight months ago. Uh, the first flight was on May 29, a little more than a month ago. And by the moment, we have uh, already implemented such flight modes such as manual, uh, stabilize, altitude hold, and now we are working on position hold by GPS. And in the nearest future, we are planning to implement waypoint flight up, uh, autonomously, of course, and autonomous takeoff and landing. So uh, this project will be a very good foundation for us for further uh, research in the field of flight autonomy. And also, I'd like to mention that SmartUp Autopilot is being installed on the quadcopter, is going to take part in IMAV 2012 uh, outdoor flight competition. So, uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, for more information, you can visit uh, our project website, www.sky-drones.com. And, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Thank you Well, I think you have done a, a wonderful job and we think that they just started in October and I keep my fingers crossed and wish you all the best for the flight competition. Thank you. And uh, it's always for me working autopilots myself and my team wonderful to see these advances in autopilot uh, technologies. Questions uh, to Kiro, please. You will get you will uh, get a microphone in a second. And again, once more please uh, let us know your name and your institution. Uh, my name is Christian Dermo. I'm from uh, RWTH Aachen University, and I have a question regarding the, um, the PVM output. Like, um, how many channels are available? It has six channels. Six channels for input and six channels for output. Okay. And uh, also, you can use uh, only one channel if you have something like spectrum uh, coding. So. You, you, you can uh, uh, read and uh, you can read uh, all the channels in uh, by one wire. It's also possible. 
And one little more question, is it limited by the processor or, or are there other limits? Uh, generally, it's uh, limited by the uh, number of processors uh, in our So uh, we use the STM32 F103, uh, so it has 64 pins, and actually uh, 6 uh, pins are dedicated for input and 6 for output, and we are run out of the free pins, so this is the maximum. Thank you very much. It's limited by the hardware. Thank you. <coughs> Any further questions? There's one from Jan Baltic up here in the front. Yeah, uh, so I'm Jan Baltic from uh, uh, Technical University of Bochweg. Uh, my question would be, are you using any kind of uh, operations? System, we are develop our own system, so it, it doesn't use RTOS. You mean yes, real time operating system? Yes, no, we don't use it. Yeah, so, uh, time for maybe one more question. That doesn't seem to be the yes, there's one more question. My name is Tim Hansen from uh, Technical University of Darmstadt. And um, so you say you uh, control the ESC with the PBM output? Yes, that's um, true. What's the update rate that the ESC can... The up update rate is 400 hertz. 400 hertz? 400. So are that special ESC? No, it's usual ESC. Okay. It's usual stock ESC. You can purchase it at anywhere model shop or... Okay. Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> Thank you very much, um, Carol and uh, <laughs> coming all the way uh, from uh, Moscow.